Hi there. In this video series, I'm going to be talking all things RSpec. We're going to be building a Rails application, various Rails applications, and testing them with RSpec. I've been publishing a, a series of videos on building Rails APIs, and people have been very interested in the testing aspect. So in this series, we're going to be diving into testing in more detail. Before jumping into our spec, the first question we should consider is why write tests? Well, there are numerous benefits to writing tests. As applications grow, it becomes more difficult to know whether you've broken existing functionality. Automated tests give you the confidence to know that as you make changes to your application, existing functionality is still working. Let's say you find a bug in your application and reproducing it is difficult and time consuming. Each time you try out a fix, you will need to reproduce the bug all over again. But with automated testing, you can just write the test once and rerun it as many times as you want. Plus it's going to assure you that the bug never reoccurs in the future. Testing acts as working documentation and helps you understand what the code is doing. If you ever find yourself checking out a code base for the first time, have a look at the test suite and it will often tell you um, what the core functionality is, different edge cases, and it will help you understand how the application works. Testing also helps you think through problems. Initially, test-driven development can be difficult and adds a cognitive overhead. But over time, when you get used to it, it can actually help you write code more quickly by helping you break down the problem into small parts. So those are some of the benefits of testing. Now let's talk about why RSpec as opposed to another Ruby test framework such as Minitest. Well, I think there are two big benefits to using RSpec. Obviously there are more, but uh, here's two of the important ones. Firstly, RSpec is very popular. I've been a Rails developer for almost 10 years now, and the majority of code bases I've worked on have used RSpec. RSpec has very good support for mocking and stubbing, which is where you replace an object in your code base with some sort of fake. We'll cover this more in a future video, but uh, RSpec is one of the best test frameworks for this, and it really helps us write um, tests easily. Okay, now let's jump into some code. For the rest of this video, I'm going to write some Ruby code to help you get familiar with RSpec syntax. First, I'll jump over to the terminal, and I'm going to make a new directory for uh, this little demo. I'll just call it RSpec test. Then I'll cd into the directory. And I'm going to open this up in my editor. What I'm going to do now is create a gem file. So I'll create a new file. And a gem file will just allow us to uh, install any gem that we want and I'm going to be using it to install RSpec. So I need to uh, add the source, https rubygems.org, and I'm going to add RSpec. Now I'm going to install the gems using bundle install, and I'll also um, generate bin stubs so that I can more easily run uh, RSpec. There we go. And the last thing I need to do is initialize RSpec. I can do bin RSpec dash dash init. And this will generate a, you can see it's generated a spec helper file and a dot RSpec file. And at this point, we are ready to write some RSpec tests. 
For this quick intro, I'm going to create a single Ruby class, which we will be testing with our spec. So I'll create a new file, and I'll call it userRB. Now inside here, I'm going to create a user class and I'll give it an initialize method, which can be supplied with a name and age. And we'll say um, name, age, we'll assign these two instance variables. We'll give it an attribute accessor. And we'll have a single method called over 13. And this will just return um, true or false, depending on whether the user is over or under the age of 13. So this is just a, a silly example, but this is uh, replicating the behavior of some social networks where you need to be over the age of 13 in order to access it. Don't worry about this code too much. I'm just using it to show you how we can test uh, Ruby classes with our spec. With our user class written, let's write a spec file for it. To do that, we need to create a file in the spec directory that ends in underscore spec rb. And ideally we should match the file name, which means we should call it user spec rb. And what we need to do is require the spec helper and we'll also require um, the user rb um, file to include our user class. I'm just going to run this to make sure, there we go, so zero examples, zero failures, but the fact that it ran means uh, our includes are probably correct. Next, I'll create a describe block uh, which will contain all of our aspect testing logic. And in this case, I'm going to be testing the user class. Inside here, I can add our first test case using an it block, where I say it does something, which will be the description of our test. And again, a do end block. At this point, I can run the tests again via the command line. And you'll see I now get one example, zero failures, which means this is actually counting as a test and it's being successfully uh, executed. Now it's not really a, a test success because it doesn't do anything. Um, so let's, let's fix that and actually write some logic here. So what does an RSpec test look like? Well, the core of an RSpec test is an expectation. And a basic expectation looks something like this. Expect one to equal one. And if I run the tests again, you can see they're still passing because um, one does equal one. Now the RSpec DSL does take a bit of getting used to. It's all valid Ruby code, but RSpec uses some tricks to make the DSL as human readable as possible. I'd advise that you don't worry about it too much for now. Just try and follow the video um, and get used to it. And at a later point, if you want to dig into how the syntax, how the syntax actually works, uh, you can do so. Now let's show you what uh, a failing test does. So if I expect one to equal two and rerun the tests, you can see I now get a failure. And you can see it says one example, one failure. And here we get the expectation that failed and uh, our spec is telling us uh, it's expected two, but it got one. Okay, 
Now let's write a test that actually exercises our user class. First, I'm going to instantiate a user instance and I'll provide it with a name and an age and I'll assign this to a variable user. Then I can say expect user over 13 to equal, uh, in this case, I'm saying that the user is 22, so it should equal true. And I can also change this test description to say um, it returns true when user is over 13. And I'll run the tests and this is passing because this is the behavior we'd expect. If I change this to false, then it's going to fail. There we go. And I can also write a test for the failing case, which would be returns false when the user is under 13. user um, Sarah no name the name isn't important but just as an example um, if their age is 12 we expect user over 13 to equal false and there we go now we have uh, two example zero failures and these are actually testing our user class. If I was to go over here and, for example, change this, now one of our specs is failing. Now this aspect code that I've written isn't particularly good. It doesn't scale well for large test suites and we've only touched on some of the very basic uh, RSpec functionality. However, the goal for this video was just to give you a brief introduction. I hope you found this useful and will stick around for the rest of the video tutorial series. Next time, we'll start building a Rails application and driving it via RSpec tests. Each step of the way, we'll be diving deeper into RSpec. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.